Glory to His holy name. Aren't you glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? I said, aren't you glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? This has been such a transitional year for so many of us. I think we can all agree that. But one thing that I know and this one thing we can be steadfast in is that God is still a faithful God. He still loves us. He still cares for us. He's still covering us. He's still keeping us. He's still sitting above the governments of the earth. He's still sitting above rulers and principalities and powers. He's still breathing through us. He is the Lord our God. Hallelujah. We give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise this morning, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I just thank him for his presence here. And it's here already. You can feel it tangibly. I just want to thank my bishop and co-pastor Penny. God bless you. I love you. And thank you for embracing me in the family. It's an emotional moment for me as much as it is a gracious moment. It's always the grace of God that keeps us open doors, closes doors. And it's just such a confirmation in different seasons when God opens a door. When he opens a door, no man can close it. I'm saying to someone, it may have been a hard year, but when God opens a door in the heavens, nothing in the earth can stop the plans and purposes of God. Job said it like this in Job 42. What can thwart the purposes of God? Nothing can thwart the purposes of God in the earth. Oh, to rest in that peace, to know that promise that he alone is still God. And so I want to greet all the elders in the house, to those of you who have come out, drawn out of your houses, put on your good frock and come into the sanctuary. We thank God for you. For the praise and worship team who blessed us already, we thank God for you. Elder Juanita, keep pouring out. We love you. Amen. The musicians. And to those of you on live stream, I pray that you are ready as we go into the word of the Lord. Amen. We're going to begin with Acts. I'm just going to read the keynote uh, verse and then we're going to unpack this as the spirit of the Lord leads. Amen. The scripture says in Acts chapter 2 verse 14, But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken as you suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. Somebody say third hour. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And I'm just going to put a pause there because we'll come back to that shortly. I've come to speak to somebody in the house this morning by divine appointment to let you know that the door is open. Uh, I said, someone caught that. I said to let you know that the door is wide open. Hell has been fighting you all year. You could have lost your mind with some things. But I've come to let somebody know, prophetically, the door is open. And it is time for you to walk through the open door. God has given you divine access. Not by virtue of your goodness. Not by virtue of your prayer. Not by virtue of your action. Not because you've been faithful. Not because the church has been faithful. Because God knows looking at us, some of us have not been faithful. When we look at the climate that we're living in right now, we got all sorts going on. We got people saying they're with God who ain't really with God. Uh, they're singing on the worship team, but they ain't singing for God. Uh, we got people preaching now who are great orators and great speakers and motivational speakers, but they're not all speaking from the Spirit of God. But I thank God that in spite of what the enemy is doing, God still has a remnant, a called out people and a ecclesia that he is raising up in this generation. And I come with a prophetic assignment to announce over every demon that's been tormenting your life, to announce over the church, we are coming through the corridor, we are coming through the passage and the door is open. 
Ekuraka sataya maha. Hiko shataya mama ko setia. Hika la mama ko shayamaha. He's Lord over all. Now you can seat, but you can stand if you need to. I want to go back because when we look in the scripture, we understand that Peter was talking. He felt the need to stand up. He was provoked to stand up. But it wasn't the first time that he had stood up. We understand when we flick back to the book of Acts and we look into verse 15, there was a selection process that needed to happen. And that selection process was required because Judas had departed from the faith. Not only departed from the faith because he betrayed Jesus, but he also departed in terms of his life. We know that he committed suicide. He was no longer with the twelve. And so there was a vacancy. There was an open vacancy. And God had already foretold through the Psalms that David had written that there would need to be a replacement when this happened. Acts 1 and 20 lets us know, for it is written in the book of Psalms, let his habitation be desolate and let no man dwell therein and his bishopric let another take. In essence, there will become an open space. But when that open space becomes available, it must be filled with another. Glory be to his name. I've come to tell you there are some open spaces. There are some people who may have disappointed you, walked away from your ministry, walked away. Your husband may have walked out of your marriage. Some friends may have walked away from you over the last year. But God's saying it's okay. It's by divine appointment, honey. You're getting upset about it and you're crying about it. But God said it was all by divine appointment. Before you got to that place, I'd already prophesied that there are some people who can't go with you where you're going. I said, there's some people, you don't know the conversations sometimes that have happened behind your back. You don't know sometimes the purposes that that person played for that season. But there's a season for all things. And sometimes some things must come to an end, is the truth. And so when we come to the scriptures, Peter, verse 15, in those days, Peter stands up the first time. In the midst of the disciples... And he says the number of names who were there, there were about 120 different people there, men and brothers. And he speaks over them that same verse we had just read. We need to find a replacement. Now, to me, Bishop, I would have had a problem with that. Let me tell you why I would have had a problem with Peter saying that we need a replacement. I would have had a problem because when you've been in a close relationship with somebody... And you've been walking with brethren for years following Jesus. And one of those brethren who sat with you, ate with you, drank with you, sang with you, lay hands with you, preached with you, listened with you, went to prayer meeting with you, sat at your table with you, decides to depart the faith and betray you or betray you in life. I would have had a trust issue with somebody else just walking up in it. I would have been with Peter. I would have been, as soon as Peter said that, I would have said, whoa, 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 whoa. Matthew, put down the chicken wings. And Luke, just turn this way for a moment. Peter's on something. I would have said Peter's on something. I know Peter's on something because we just lost Judas. Now, I don't know if I'm ready to trust somebody again. I don't know if I'm really ready to let somebody into the fold. Come on, we've walked together and we saw Judas. Judas looked us in the eye round the table when Jesus said one would betray him and he didn't speak up and say a thing. I wouldn't be trusting nobody to come back into the fold. But you understand, Peter was not speaking from his emotion. And the issue with some of us in this season is we will miss what God has for us if we get caught in our feelings. Oh, it's not that you're not justified to feel some type of way that God is moving you maybe into a new position at work or moving you into a new ministry or transitioning you into a new church or maybe he's pushing you into a new relationship or maybe he's ushering you into a new friendship. But whatever it is, God is asking you in this season, you've got to trust me. 
You see, Peter was not speaking of himself. Peter was a man, we understand from scripture, that stood in a boat, looked out into the mist on the transient waters and said, Jesus, if it is you, I'm not sure if it's you. And that's the thing with some of us in this season. We're not really sure that it's really Jesus. Uh, we heard so many things in this season that God has to retrain our ears, help us to discern again. That's really God. I know you woke me up with a dream. I know you're giving me a prophecy, but I've got to discern if it's really God that's speaking. And for some of us, God is saying, you just got to come back to listening to my voice again. Got to retrain your ear to discern again. Because I don't want you to miss divine appointment. And so when Peter stands being a man who across the water, standing on the word of God. He stands back again the first time. He says, but remember what was said in the Psalms. God wants to remind somebody in here. Remember what I told you before you came into this season. Because when you stand, you can't stand on lofty ideas and opinions or on your emotion. You've got to stand on the word of the Lord. Is there anyone in here that knows that this is a season that I have to remember the promises he made me? What did he tell me about my healing? What did he tell me about my church? What did he tell me about my body? What did he tell me about my children? What is it that God prophesied to you that he needs you to? stand on firm and sure in this season and there was Peter saying if I if we let our emotion lead us it will betray the spirit let me say that again for somebody online if you let your emotion lead you in this season it will betray you from the things of the spirit uh, you see I'm going to kill a demon in here today. <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> Praise be to God. So as we move forward, he says this. And so they have to make an appointment. Got 120 people, but it's going to come down to one. Now there was criteria. He says, this is the criteria, verse 21. Of the people that are here, hear this. But the people that are here and have accompanied with us, the selection we will make is that number one, this person must have been with us from the beginning of when John was baptized, from the um, baptism of John, sorry, when John baptized Jesus Christ, amen? The second thing he says is that the same person needs to have been there the same day that Jesus was taken up from us. The next thing he says is that this person too must be ordained to be a witness of his resurrection, must have seen his resurrection. So what was happening was the 120 were there. And as they heard the criteria, some people were falling back, well, that weren't me, I weren't there at the resurrection. And then some of them were falling back and said, well, I wasn't there when following his co-complete ministry, I came in about halfway through. And then some people were falling away and said, well, you're talking about being there since when Jesus got baptized. That's right at the beginning of the journey. And so what it spoke to me is that there are some people and over 120 plus people who were following Jesus from a distance. They were right there when he got baptized. They were right there when he was crucified. They were right there when he was resurrected. But they weren't counted amongst the 12. The 12 was for a committed, devoted, and called selection. And that meant that there were 120 devoted people who were almost seen as insignificant to the 12. But I've come to let somebody know that Matthias, who was following God faithfully in the background, watching God, he was sitting from a distance hearing the teaching about faith, hearing the teaching about healing, hearing the teaching about prophecy, hearing the teachings. He was the same guy who turned up, saw Jesus bleed out. He saw Jesus resurrected, but even still, he wasn't counted amongst the 12. But let me tell you, though you may have been in the background, 
God is saying, I have been preparing you in the background for a divine appointment. I said, I've come to call a Matthias in here this morning. Two people then stood before them. One called Joseph Justice and the other one was called Matthias. Now they looked at the two and said, my God, if we make a selection, we could potentially get this wrong. So we're going to have to take this to the Lord. The scripture says that Peter turned around and it says, he says, verse 24, let us pray that the Lord, which knoweth the hearts of all men, show whether of these two thou hast chosen. In essence, before they made a decision, they had to stop and say, but hold on, before we make any choices, justice looks good, but Matthias looks good too. He's got the mouth, and he, but he's got the mouth too, and he's faithful. But, and then they were stuck between two opinions, and someone in here was stuck between two opinions. I don't know which way to go. This way looks good, but then, 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 that, that way looks good too. This job opportunity looks good, but so does that God. And I've come to let you know, pray before you make your decision. Oh, you my feeling, your emotion. I want to walk away from the ministry. I'm tired of backbiting. I'm tired of not being seen. I'm tired of not being significant. But I come to let somebody know in here, God has a significant role for you to play in this season. And he is making a space for you. They had to pray. And so they appointed Matthias. Matthias was a selection bishop. Now, Matthias was somebody who was so insignificant that we get no idea of his genealogy. There's nothing that says Matthias, the son of this, the son of that, the son of this, the son of that. And to some of you, where God is pushing you into in this season, you don't have no real tangible experience for it. You ain't never seen a good example of it, but you're getting married. You ain't never seen how to lead a ministry, but God's calling you to do it. You've never seen how to run a business, but God's calling you to do it. You've never led broken women, but God's calling you to do it. You've never served those who are homeless, but God's calling you to do it. And some of you are going to have to quit talking yourself out of stuff that God is calling you into. Matthias had to stand there. And I imagine that Matthias feeling some type of way. I don't even share the background and experience with these people, but I'm here. Imagine him feeling like he was maybe less than the, others, the other 12, the other 11, sorry, because he's there and he's thinking, I don't really know you, Peter. I don't really know you, John. But one thing I know, God has put me in this place. You ain't going to know a whole lot of people where God is pushing you into but you've got to know that God has put you in that place. For some of you, you are going through great transitions. This is a great shift in your journey. And there are heavy decisions that you have to make. But I come to encourage you. God is making space for you. And he has appointed you for that purpose. Don't let nobody talk you out of the things that God is trying to talk you into. I said, don't let nobody talk you out of the things that God is trying to talk you into. And for some of you, the biggest warfare has been going on in your mind. The insecurity sometimes comes when we stand amongst people who seem more experienced than ourselves, more talented, more gifted. And sometimes we have become such a comparative generation. Come on, some of us, what's killing our purpose, killing us flourishing in our callings is we are constantly comparing our success, quote unquote, with other people's success, our breakthrough with other people's breakthrough, our callings with other people's callings. But let me come and dust some dirt off you this morning and remind you, you were uniquely called with an incredible purpose. Nobody can do what God has crafted for you to do. Stop letting your own emotion dictate to you how worthy you are or 
unworthy you are of the calling of God on your life. Some of us have to do like David in this season. Stand feeling weary. Stand feeling tired. Stand feeling tested. But encourage ourselves in the Lord. And say, he appointed me, so I'm going to stand on this. He called me, so I'm going to walk this through. I don't know if I've got anyone who can agree with me this morning. But one thing I'm not going to do in this season is allow my emotion to talk me out of what God is calling me into. People are dying in our nation. People are broken in our nation. And it's time the church wake up with a radical fire and say, God, I don't feel like it, but I'm going to do it anyway. I ain't got a good voice, but if you put me on the choir, I'm going to sing anyway. I don't preach like Juanita Pinem, but either way, if you call me to preach, I'm going to preach anyway. My healing ministry, help me musicians. Don't look like how everybody else's looks. I may not do it like Benny Hinn. I may not preach like Catherine Coleman, but I still believe you're a God of miracles. Have I got a church in here this morning? That rope that you've had around your neck, God says you've got to pull it off, baby. Them chains around your ankles. Where everywhere time you get ready to move forward, you feel like something's pulling you back. But God said, Matthias, I've called you. Come forth in the name of Jesus. You may feel weary and tired. God ain't calling you at your best. But he said, even in your weakness, my strength is made perfect. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own logic, your own wisdom, your own experience, your own understanding. And so there was Matthias. Appointment had been made. In essence, God said, I'm moving you to be an apostle. That means I'm giving you greater authority. That means I'm giving you greater dominion. That means you're going to walk in a greater level of the anointing. And I know it tears you, Matthias, because you're caught between your emotion and the calling of God. But I've had to tear you in this season. I've had to break you in this season. But I'm tearing you for more because you're called for more. I know you've grieved in this season. You may feel like you're walking away from your friends in this season. You may feel like you're leaving a nation in this season. But God had to turn around. And I imagine him with Matthias saying, but I called you for more. The heavens have opened. I've given you dominion. You prayed and asked for it. But it ain't come the way you thought it was going to come. But God is speaking to us this morning. Speaking to us online. I have torn you and I know I've broken you and I know you've cried sometimes and I know you felt tired sometimes felt even suicidal sometimes felt depressed sometimes but God has come to tell someone this morning this appointment should you say yes should you say yes should you say yes this day I will pour into your cup a new oil your cup will run it over 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 makaya iroye kishyamaha iranana kositi abaha ikoshiya mama kosoye ikora mama kosheya hallelujah John said it like this on the Isle of Patmos, torn because he answered a call, left abandoned and isolated on an an island by himself. But he sat and said, behold, 
I see an open door. And God began to show him the throne room of heaven. I believe when Matthias answered that call and they made this selection, he knew he would have to give a radical commitment like never before. He would have to devote his life like never before. But it was the appointment of God to stand in a new place. And then the second time when Peter stands and Bishop took us through it last week is in Acts chapter 2 and the time of Pentecost comes and there was a rich outpouring of the spirit of the living God. Oh, what a glorious day it was where the power of the Holy Spirit came and it equipped every person in the room with power like never before to take forth the gospel in the age they were living in. And I don't know about you church, I, I love songs and I love worship and I love preaching and I love prophecy. But there is nothing like the presence of God. And if we do it all, but we do not have the presence, then what are we doing it for? And really, who are we doing it for? Oh, my God. But they encountered the divine presence of God. Pastor Penny sat with them, sat on them, came like a rushing wind into the room. And engulfed them, filled them to the point where they began to speak in tongues. Not strange things, but the scripture says they began to declare the wondrous works of the Lord. Oh, that means that as they spoke in tongues, they began to say, he is mighty. He is a king on the throne. He is holy, but all in different types of tongues. The wondrous works of God. But in the midst of this outpouring, Bishop, the Bible lets us know Peter found reason to stand up. Something was wrong. The Bible tells us that even as the Spirit of the Lord began to move, verse 12 of Acts 2, they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? Others mocking said, These men are full of new wine. Oh, let me break this down for you. So the Holy Spirit began to move. And, and there was all types of manifestations, Marsha. But in the midst of all of that, there was mocking. To mock means that you're insulting. You can sometimes even try and uh, um, copy what somebody else is doing to begin to mimic them. So whilst people were speaking in real tongues... I imagine there were people speaking mocking. And even though there were people getting real infillings, I imagine there were people mocking and just doing all of this type of stuff. They're doing the actions, but the spirit ain't really on them. Are you with me, somebody? And even though there were people who were standing up and declaring the wonders of God, I imagine there were other people, Elder Ezra, who were saying, oh, he's good, and he's worthy, and he's mighty. And do you not know that that is exactly what we have in this culture. We have people who are walking in the true spirit of God, who are flowing under the true anointing with God. But in the midst of it, we've got people who have learned how to do what we do. I need to speak to the real church in here this morning. I said, I need to speak to the real church in here this morning. I said, we've got people giving true prophecies. But amongst the people giving true prophecies, you've got people mocking Bishop. And they say, I just hear the Lord say that you're going to have a new house by the end of the week. Just drop a five dollars at the front of the church. In between that, we've got people putting hands on other people and decreeing healing. And ain't no healing going on. Ain't no deliverance going on. Hallelujah. But I've come to decree under the power of the living God that God will not be mocked. He is raising up a chosen generation. He is raising up a royal priesthood. And so, 
Peter had a problem. What it tells me is between the first time of the appointment when he stood, he must have sat down somewhere in between that. Because we wouldn't say you're standing, you're still standing. So he sat down. Oh, probably under the weight of the anointing, my sister. Just sat down to take a break. But something stirred in his spirit. You see, God is raising up people, you see. Even in this generation, he's raising up people, Peter's, who can't sit down and hear something that ain't God. Uh, they can't sit down and clap their hands and go, everybody, you can all do it. But Peter ain't doing it. Hallelujah. Peter sat there and said, mm -mm 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 -mm. something about that spirit ain't right. Something about that voice ain't, something about that prophecy ain't right. Something about the way he moved and did, ain't right. And Peter refused to sit there and keep his mouth shut. And God is raising up people in this generation who can't sit under a string anointing can't sit under a strange spirit can't sit under a false spirit counterfeit spirit Jezebel spirit but must speak out and as Peter got to his feet I believe every spirit had to shut their mouth Peter stood up in the power of God said no 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 this cannot continue this is not what you are calling it they even said you've been looks like they've been drunk with wine as if to say they were intoxicated yes they were intoxicated but not with wine with the spirit of the living God. Some of us cut, let me say this. Some of us are struggling because people are mislabeling our season. They look, somebody online needs to say, nobody's gonna mislabel my season. Don't call it delay when I'm on time. the church is getting smaller but God said to me about a couple of weeks ago he whispered to me girl I'm adding to the church every day I'm raising up prophets every day I'm raising up evangelists every day I'm raising up the church is continuously growing in Asia, in Africa, in Europe, in America, in Jamaica, in the Caribbean. Peter had to stand to his feet and say, I don't know what you're speaking over the church, but what you're speaking over us is a lie. It's a lie. It's a lie. And for some of you, you ain't been able to get up because people have spoken things over you that was a lie. Oh, sometimes we are really receiving counsel from people who are speaking a lie. Opinions from people who are speaking a lie. But I come to speak life to you this morning. You have to rise up and decree. Nobody will mislabel my season. This is my season of the open door. Everything I need in this season that God has declared, it don't matter how it looks, it don't matter how I feel, this is the season of the open door. Marco Shataya. Finance is coming, souls are coming, healing is coming, prophecies will be made manifest. This is my season of the open door. You must come into a line with what heaven is saying about your life. How can any two walk together unless they agree? 
me tell you why it's the season of the open door. And I'm ending on this now. I said every gate's opening. Every gate's opening. Every gate, hear this now. I'm nearly done, Bishop. Let me tell you. The scripture says this, when Peter stood the second time and decreed, he said, these are not drunken, as you suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. What is the symbolism of the third hour of the day? The third hour would have been the watch between 9 a.m. and slightly after it, when the Jews would bring what was called the Tamud. It was known as the eternal offering. And they would bring that for the 9 a.m. just after, sacrifice the lamb as a burnt offering before the Lord. Are you with me? And, 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 and amen, Bishop. And as they... <laughs> Praise them. And as they are doing this offering here and shedding the blood for the burnt offering, there would be the sound of worship and the trumpets would be blown. I'm going to come to the scripture in Chronicles in a moment. And as the offering went before God as a burnt offering and the ashes were collated, they would move forward to the brazen laver and begin to wash themselves. And after they had washed themselves at the brazen laver, they would then open the gates and walk into the holies of holies. And so Jesus, being the eternal lamb, was put to crucify when? At the third hour. Then the Bible tells us it was at the ninth hour that Jesus actually died which would have been the second sacrifice of the second lamb that had to be burnt on the burnt offering. So Jesus became the eternal burnt offering. In essence, his blood had opened the door and the gate. It was eternally open. Eternal passage. Eternal sacrifice. Eternal deliverance, eternal miracles, eternal life, eternal redemption, eternal healing, eternal passage. So Peter stands up on the third hour and has to remind them, this is what Joel prophesied. He stands on the word again for the second time. First it was Psalms, now it's Joel. He said, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In essence, he helps them to understand, this is the season, this is the third hour. It is at the third hour of Pentecost that God's blood opened up the gates and we have eternal passage into all power, all liberty, all access through the blood of Jesus Christ. I don't know who's been telling you, you ain't got passage, you don't have power, you don't have the authority, that we won't enlarge, that we can't build, that we don't have enough resources, but God said, I have before you like John an open door walk through the open door walk through the open door all I need is a yes praise his name Jebel said and let me remind you 
because this day, even before some of you leave here, it shall come to pass that God will pour his spirit out on you and upon your flesh, that you will prophesy, that your children will prophesy and see visions, that the old men and women will dream dreams. God is pouring out his spirit even this day. He says to you, the door is open. He is going to show you great wonders in the heavens above and signs in the earth beneath. Blood, hear it, and fire. Makoroye keshiamaha and vapor of smoke. In essence, God was saying, I'm about to come in this season, but the way I'm going to do things, I'm going to move through the earth with signs you don't understand. But don't mislabel it and call it the enemy. Oh God, it's God moving. God is moving in this nation and the nations of the earth. Let me end with this last verse from, from Chronicles. You know, I had all these notes. I didn't even preach from any of them. Oh, God, that's just the way he goes. Amen. That's a message by itself. I don't know what plans you've got lined up for the rest of the year. But God's telling some of you, you need to wipe your calendar clean. I'm about to disturb your calendar with some supernatural stuff you didn't ask for. I am the Lord, your God. I am the Lord. I am the Lord. We're going to get there, Terry. Second, Second Chronicles 29 and 27 says this. Are you with us at home? I hope you're with us. If you are, say, my door is open. I want you to type that on the screen. Second Chronicles 29, 27, last verse, and I'm gone. Hezekiah, during the burnt offering, said to them, offer the burnt offering on the altar. When the burnt offering began, the song of the Lord also began. Hope you're ready, Elder Juanita. With the trumpets and with the instruments of David, king of Israel. And the whole assembly began worshiping. The singers were singing. And the trumpeters were playing. And it continued until the burnt offering was completely consumed. So during the day of Pentecost, it was an ensign, a time of celebration. I believe that we leave a mark, a banner as we leave from here, Marsha. Let that banner over you be one of victory praise. Let the trumpet sound. Let our voices of singing, even behind these masks, be lifted up. This is your new day. And there is a strengthening coming to you. About three of you have got it started standing to your feet. I said, there's a strength coming to you. We are the church. Amen. We are the sons and daughters of the Most High God. And He has called you. He has equipped you. And He is strengthening you even now. This is your time for the open door. This is your time to walk through. This is your time to give Him a perpetual yes. Yes to your will. Yes to your way. I know I, got, I, know I nearly tapped out last season. But I'm still telling you, yes, Lord. This is a new commitment. This is a new day. This is a new dedication in Jesus' name. So open up your mouths and I want you to give him a praise. Let this be a sacrificial praise. Let this be a sacrificial offering. One you've had buried on the inside. God says, let it out, let it out, let it out, let it out. Let it out, let it out, let it out, let it out. This is a time he's purging you. This is a time he's purifying you. This is a time he is equipping you. This is a time he is healing you. This is a time he's delivering you. He will perform his word. Stand on the word of God. He is faithful to complete everything he has said, everything he has decreed. And the door is open. Access has been granted.